Getting ready for the core 80 call. The core 80 call. If you hear my voice, if you see the live feed activated in your Facebook account, then put everything away and come on down. Learn some composizione and uh, resonate. Resonate. So we're going to. This is uh, episode 13 of the Core 80 Call. I'm Don Victor. Here's my funny, funny face. Um, we have a good show for you today. We have a good show for you today. Uh, I'm going to focus on the call today. What is the call? This episode is dedicated to an old friend, Orlando. Orlando. Boras, and um, I dedicate this one to you, buddy, because you were the first one to illustrate the call, and uh, Bill Jordan helped me take that understanding to a whole nother level, and that's why we're doing the Core 80 call. So let me explain the call. The call isn't a telephone call. The call is... Frequency. It's a name. It is a vibe. It is energy. It is uh, a summons. It's gone out into the universe, into the cosmos, and it's radiating. It's vibrating. It's speaking. It's making music. And if you're one who is at a point in their life where you begin to hear the call, you start drawing towards the call, and that's who we're looking for. We're just not looking for anybody to come and move paint around and draw pretty pictures at the Academy of Composition. We are purpose-driven people, people of vision, people of 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 uh, of power we want to leave legacy in our art as well in as in our life and if this sounds like the language that you speak in your own heart in your own life or at least the language that you're trying to learn how to speak into your own life into your own heart then you need to at least listen Glean as much information as you can from these calls, from these videos. Apply it to your life. Apply it to your work. Apply it to your marriage. Apply it to how you raise your children. Apply it to your art. Apply it to how you treat animals. Whatever. So where did the call come from? Let me show you. Well, let me start here. And I'll bring this quote up a few more times over the next hundred, uh, you know, as we go through these hundred videos. But the call is vibration. And Nikola Tesla said, if you want to really understand the universe, some would say, if you really want to understand God, you need to begin to think in terms of vibration, frequency, energy. I'm going to say, if you want to understand art, be it uh, the art of motion through performance, maybe animation, uh, the art of sound through music, the art of sight through visual arts, if you really want to understand that, and I mean, and, and go beyond just the, the form that you're looking at, 
and really push into deeper, uh, a deeper and more profound depth of what that is. You have to begin to think in terms of frequency, in terms of uh, um, uh, vibration. See, I like reading the creation story in the El Biblio. I like it. As an artist, I like it. As a composer, I love it. Because when it says that God spoke, boom. Now, I'm not going to argue about evolution and that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm looking at the technology that's in that, in that thing. When God spoke, in the Hebrew, the word is the, the, it's called the bar. And the bar means the word. The word of God, the voice goes out. And in, inside of the Debar is two things. There is, the, let's say, the DNA of, uh, or the instructions of what needs to occur and the power and the authority to make it happen. So it's a vibration that goes out. And, and everything contained within it that needs to be, quote-unquote, created or evolved or brought into existence is already there. So years ago, uh, Orlando, I went to Orlando's house when I was living in Puerto Rico and, uh, and his son, who I call the governor, was out playing basketball and Orlando wanted his son to come in, and so he goes, and he goes, he makes this whistle sound. It's all he did. And his son, who was up the road playing basketball with his friends, stops, drops the ball. See you later, guys. I got to go home. Bam. And I thought it was one of the most amazing things ever. So that's what I do with my children. I... And you don't know how amazing it is when you're at a store. And uh, I don't let my son run around the store, but my daughter, I let her run around. I'll say, buddy, you got to stay with daddy. Zofie, she can go off. And uh, so the other day we were at the store, we were getting some art supplies. And, uh, and Sally says, Daddy, uh, let, me, let me go find Sophie. I said, no, 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 we don't need that, buddy. We don't need that. We're just going to go to the register. And so as I walked to the register, because I knew if I let him run off, he, he, I'd have to go find him, right? So he stayed with me. We walked to the register. And as I walked to the register, just two or three times, I put out the call. I go to the register to pay. I turn around, I see her little black head, boop, 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 coming down the aisles. We go to another store, you know, and, and now they're at the point where they find great joy in coming to the call, right? So I don't need to go hunt for them. I don't need to go find them. I just need to put out the call. And you just wait. And people look at me like I'm weird. Because I'm just standing there by myself. And they look at me like, what the heck is up with this dude? And then all of a sudden, you see their little black heads popping down the aisles. You know, coming like, you know, over the little stuff that you can buy. Little tables. And then they come. And people look at you like, what the heck was that? So it... I love that I learned that from Orlando when I was young, and now I'm able to give that to my children, and it's something that they'll be able to pass on. And Alexi, you better pass on it onto your boy and your girl uh, when that time comes, but hold off for a couple more years. Um, the, and so that's the call. Now let me show you a visual of what this actually looks like. See, back in the olden days, back in my my uh, church days many, many moons ago, uh, 
there's a scripture that says um, something about the the good shepherd and the sheep know the, the 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 call of the shepherd or the voice of the shepherd, right? And I just thought, oh, that's kind of cool, you know, whatever. I didn't know what it meant, you know. But let me show you a shepherd's call, calling his sheep, okay? And in this little video, this really tight little video clip, uh, you're gonna see three people try to call in the sheep, and then when the shepherd comes. He puts out the right call. Now, what is the call? And listen closely, because the call is his voice, and his voice is a vibration. It's a tone. It's a, it's a, it's a frequency that is unique to him. And the, the, the sheep that are his come, okay? So when, when, when uh, you'll, you'll see in here, how uh, other people and listen to their voices, right? You'll, you'll, you're you're going to hear different tones, different voices, and uh, so let me show it to you. Just a little quick, quick video here, and then we'll get into the art part of it. So here, this guy is calling the sheep, but they don't come. Test two, this girl comes up, tries to call the sheep. You can see her, come, 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 whatever. She's making her sound. They don't come. Test three, this girl pops up. She can't call them. And then the farmer comes along. And he makes his sound, and all of a sudden, the sheep come and come. This is the, the technology of the call. That's fascinating, right? That's what the core 80 call is. See, when I wanted you guys, I said to Bill, Bill, man, I got to go out and gather them. I got to go find them. He's like, what are you talking about, man? They already is where they is, you know. And uh, I'm like, what the heck is he talking about? And so I thought of these these different things, and I was like, wait, that's he's so right. You already exist. You've just been waiting for somebody to come along and say, You've been working on your artwork for how many years? Knowing something's wrong with it, but couldn't put your finger on it. People come along, they pat you on the head, say, good little artist. Oh, it's so wonderful. You know, women out there showing their husbands, and the husband's like, oh, it's so great. And the woman's like, ah, oh, but I know something's wrong with it. Oh, stop it. And the men are out there frustrated because they, they want to push to another level, but they can't figure out what the hell, like, what to do. And their wives come along, you know, good job, honey, good job. And then what happens is the artist feels alone. Nobody, nobody understands them. And they try to study, they try to get the books, but it doesn't have the right information. Or it has information and they don't understand it. They go, they pay for colleges, and they go to colleges, and they know they want something. They spend a lot of money and get almost no education. And horrible instruction. So then they go and they pay for all these little uh, ateliers. And they sit there for how many years just copying, copying, copying. Never learning to compose. Never learning to think. Just copy. So we stop the damn copying. And we start composing. That is the motto at the academy. Stop copying. Stop it. And start composing. Now, if what I'm saying resonates with you, then you're hearing the call. Then Facebook message me so we can get you started. Tomorrow morning, Thursday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, 11 o'clock uh, California Time, we're starting our next round of instruction 
if you want to be in part of that instruction, if you want to be in that group, Facebook me today. Let's have a phone call. Let's take a look at some of your work. I want to hear what's uh, been bothering you for the last 20 years and that you can't figure out. I know artists, who, who, professional artists for 40 years, painting for 40 years professionally. Ready to pack it all up. Because they couldn't figure out how to design and compose. And they knew that's where they needed to be. But the information wasn't there. Everybody's teaching you how to move color or copy this or whatever. And there's no soul in the work. No soul. No story. No, no purpose to it. That's, that's, that's the heart of the composer. We are purpose-driven people. And if that's who you are, and that's what you want, and you hear this call, then Facebook message, Facebook me today. All right, so let's take a look at a brilliant work of Arte by Klemp. You'll, you'll realize one thing about these pieces is that they're so beautiful, and they're so um, uh, elegant. And there's so much information in them, and yet they're, they're, they've been edited down. They've been refined. See, you ever wonder why they call it fine art? It's been refined. It's not folk art. You know, uh, it's been refined. And editing is part of the composition process. So we're going to just take a real quick look at this image. Okay. Uh, it's a brilliant, uh, there's a brilliant analysis here for color. It looks like it's in an R, uh, a red, yellow, blue uh, key. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the thrust map on this puppy. Boom. High point of contrast. When I'm squinting my eyes, is that little that little rectangle, that little blue, up in the top. Now, one reason it's it's kind of it's kind of neat because you have this. If we go back, you have this beautiful little orange, right in there. Maybe like a red orange. Right up against that uh, that dark. I mean that that light blue. And if you look at that and you squint your eyes a little bit, you'll be able to see that that little blue pops in terms of value. It pops versus the blue down in the bottom left-hand corner, which is a lot more muted. It's very close to that one, but it, but it is muted. It's a little darker. It's a little cooler. And notice there is no reds around there. There's no oranges in there. So that little orange, that little red orange, brings uh, that blue, brings more blue out in that area. So, um, so this is where I, when I look at this piece, I would say is the highest point of contrast. It almost gives you hope. Like you kind of look down this road and you see this this black area down here. And you're like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? And as you're walking down there, you kind of look up a little. Bam, and you see this little spot of light, this, this little glimmer of hope. And I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, our dominant vertical is coming straight through this little yellow patch coming down through here. You have the light, uh, the light, the um, little window, the little door here. And that tree line curves through and then comes straight up. Boom, boom. Dominant vertical. Dominant horizontal is that line in the bottom here. It's kind of pretty simple. Your dominant vertical, this is a little tricky one because you got this one here and then you got this one here. But I went with this one because one, it's longer uh, and it goes through more changes. Where this one is kind of just like short and, and, and a little more direct. But this here it brings your eye, draws your eye across uh, the image a little bit better. 
And so I would uh, put this one here as the dominant diagonal. Your dominant arc, it's kind of neat. It's, it's right in here. And you might even, with the dominant arcs, you can go a couple different ways. You can look for an arc, a curve, right? Or you can look for a set of curves, which then gives you an arabesque. I mean, honestly, that arabesque could probably flow in the whole bottom of those trees. So on the left-hand side, there's this beautiful curve that just sweeps you through up and back, back the other way. Um, so in this image, <clears throat> I have the dominant arc, and then it ends here at this tree where the, where the, uh, where the trunk of the tree meets the branches. But if you continued your eye along the base, uh, along where the, the branches meet the trunk, you can see that it, it moves in this beautiful sweeping curve, which is very nice, which then ultimately brings you back up to the uh, dominant contrast. So another thing that we can look at is how things are repeated. We can look at an arabesque. We can see how curves are um, are being moved through the uh, how curves are moving our eye through this piece. You can see how the trees are, are being formed up and around this blue area. How it, it's almost like the trees are sprouting up on dominant uh, on verticals, and then whew, they kind of like suck in and then suck out again. Um, creating this beautiful little tunnel, this, this little moment of intimacy, of closeness, of tightness as you're walking down this path. And then as your eye moves up, they open up a little bit, and then especially to reveal this little blue spot. The, uh, this is called a radiating point. I'm going to switch between this one and the original right here, and you'll be able to see... Uh, let me see here. Yeah, um, you'll be able to see how there's all of these um, little thrusts and these little angles, these little marks, these little directions that are bringing our eye back to this this uh, spot over here, this dark area. So just I'm gonna just keep it like that on this image. And I want you to just take a look at this image right now. And start down here with this diagonal, and you'll see. Now, some will call this one-point perspective. It's not one-point perspective. It's just a radiating point. Um, oftentimes, it gets confused for that, but it is a design strategy, okay? Um, and so all of these lines are radiating from this point, uh, and you can you can really begin to feel that as you as your eye moves up through these trees, everything comes back to this uh, this dark area. I don't know if that's a fence or or an entrance. Um, I can't read it. It's, it's just too small. Um, but ult but that's where your eye goes. And as your eye is going there, this high point of contrast lifts your eye up. So now now there's a, another level of animation as you're walking through this 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 um, uh, canopy. Your eye moves up and you see out through the trees. It's a really beautiful, beautiful uh, experience here. Kind of reminds me of one of the uh, drawings I did when I went out and I was walking down a path and, and, I, and my eye just kind of went up into the sky and it went up and I was like, wow, the sky's so big. And I wanted to capture that experience where you're walking down this path, which was very tight and small, and then as your eye just kind of moved up, it opened up into the sky. Um, uh, maybe I'll show you guys that uh, sometime in these uh, 100 videos. So that's the piece today. Uh, it's a very simple piece, but it's a beautiful and elegant design, and I want you guys to think about it. And so maybe uh, when you're working on your artwork, how can you get a canopy feel to that? To your work what's the vibration that is required i mean look at the trees the spacing of those trees the way that uh everything moves through um those uh how your eye moves through those trees uh, how your eye moves through those trees <laughs> that's a lot that was a hard sentence to say um and and as your eye moves through them 
you, you can begin to feel a frequency, a pulse, a vibration of those trees, why they're placed where they are, you know, uh, even as you look up, you know, as your eye starts to move up, you can see how uh, the artist designed all of that uh, energy. And it's really cool because he used low value, so it wasn't like punch you in the face energy, but there's just this vibe to it as, as you look up through it. And, um, and that's something you want to begin to pay attention to. How can you manage your textures, your paint strokes, um, all of these things, because they all give off a vibe. They all, give, they all create a vibration. And, uh, and you want to be able to compose your work at that level as well. So I thank you again today uh, for tuning in and... Uh, and I'm, these things are really exciting. I'm, I'm really, really falling in love with making these videos for you guys. So um, it's it's been a fun fun thing. Tomorrow will be uh, will mark two weeks. So it'll be number fourteen. It's a two week anniversary. No. <laughs> and uh, so remember, uh, share it, share it in your Facebook uh, groups or your profile or any pages you might have. Uh, and more importantly, remember. Tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock, uh, Thursday at 11 Eastern Time, 1 o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, Western Time, uh, California Time, at 1 o'clock New York Time, Eastern Time, we're going to be, we're going to be doing our first instruction. So, uh, if you want to be at that level, if you want to get in, again, Facebook me today so we can have a conversation and uh, so you can be there tomorrow with us. All right. On that note, arrivederci.